Natasha Devon, actor, poet, and a teaching artist here at Arts Life Theater in Fayetteville, Arkansas. In honor of Black History Month, I am going to be reading The Drinking Gore by Jeanette Winter. Long ago, before the Civil War, there was an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe who did what he could to help free the slaves. Joe had a plan. He'd use his hammer and nail and saw and work for the master, the man who owned the slaves, on the cotton plantation. Joe had a plan. At night, when the work was done, he'd teach the slaves a song that secretly told them the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking gourd, he said. When the song was learned and they sung all day, Peg Leg Joe would slip away to work for another master and teach the song again. One day, a slave called Molly saw her husband James sold to another master. James would be taken away, their family torn apart, just one more night together. A quail called in the trees that night. Molly and James remembered Joe's song. They sang it low. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom. If you follow the drinking gourd, they looked to the sky and saw the stars. Taking their little son Isaiah, old Hattie and her grandson George, Molly and James set out for freedom that very night. Following the stars of the drinking gourd, they ran all night through the fields till they crossed the streams to the woods. When daylight came, they hid in the trees, watching, listening for the master's hounds set loose to find them. But the dogs lost the runaway scent at the stream. Molly and James and Isaiah and old Hattie and young George were not found. They hid all day in the woods. At night, they walked again singing Joe's song and looking for the signs that mark the trail. The riverbank makes a very good road. The dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on, follow the drinking gourd. Walking by night and sleeping by day, for weeks they traveled on, sometimes berries to pick and corn to snatch, sometimes fish to catch sometimes empty bellies to sleep on, sometimes no stars to guide the way. They never knew what laid ahead. There was danger from men who would send them back in danger from hungry beasts. Sometimes a kind deed was done. One day, as they hid in a thicket, a boy from a farm found them. In a bag of feed for the hogs in the wood, he brought bacon and cornbread to share. Singing low, they traveled on. The river ends between two hills. Follow the drinking gourd. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. On and on, they followed the trail to the river's end. From the top of the hill, they saw the new path another river beneath the stars to lead them to freedom land. The drinking gourd led them on. The song was almost done. When the great big river meets the little river, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for you to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. Then they climbed the last hill. Down below was Peg Leg Joe, waiting at the wide Ohio River to carry them across. Their spirits rose when they saw the old man. Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and George 
ran to the shore. Under a starry sky, Joe rowed them across the wide Ohio River. He told them of hiding places where they would be safe. A path of houses stretched like a train on a secret track leading north to Canada. He called it the Underground Railroad. It carried riders to freedom. The first safe house stood on the hill. The lamp was lit, which meant it was safe to come in. Ragged and weary, they waited while Joe signaled low with the hoot of an owl. Then the door opened wide to welcome the freedom travelers. They rushed through the house to the barn, for the farmers knew there were slave catchers near. A trap door in the floor took them under the barn to hide until it was safe to move. Then Peg Leg Joe went back to the river to meet others who followed the drinking gourd. With danger still near, too close for ease, the farmer sent the five travelers on. He drew a map that showed the way north on the midnight road to the next safe house just two hills over. This time, James called the signal, a hoot like an owl that opened the door to a Quaker farm. The travelers were led to a secret room hidden behind shelves. They rested there for days and healed their wounds in soft bed with full meals, new clothes, hot baths washed away some fear and pain. Isaiah smiled. When they were strong, they traveled again from house to house on the Underground Railroad, still following the drinking gourd north. Sometimes they traveled on foot, sometimes by cart. The wagon they rode near their journey's end carried fruit to the market and the runaways to freedom. At last, they came to the shores of Lake Erie. Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George climbed aboard the steamship that would carry them across to Canada to freedom. Five more souls are safe, old Hattie cried. The sun shined bright when they stepped on land. They had followed the drinking gourd. Thank you so very much for joining us.